The great Antoine Fuqua, who I think is a terrific director, I've had the pleasure of sitting down with him on a couple of occasions. He's awesome. Well, of course, he made some news last year when it got announced that he was going to be directing a Michael Jackson biopic. Now, the question of a Michael Jackson biopic has been brought up many times over the past decade and more about when are they going to make a Michael Jackson biopic. And I used to say back in the AMC movie talk days, I used to say, I don't know if they'll ever make one. Because, I mean, if you do, you're going to have instant controversy because you're going to have, have half the people who are going to be upset about your movie not being about the child allegations. And if you do bring up child allegations, you're going to get the other half of the audience that doesn't think that should be a part of it. And that it's all lies to besmirch Michael Jackson. Well, it didn't take long for the controversy to come up. And it's <laughs> coming from an interesting source. Mm -hmm. The director of Finding Neverland, uh, or Leaving Neverland, I should see. Finding Neverland is a different movie. That's totally wonderful, by the way. But the documentary <laughs> Leaving Neverland, that was kind of a damning documentary about Michael Jackson and the allegations against him, has now come out and said he's read the script for the Antoine Fuqua movie and says it's all a sham. Uh, this comes to us from the folks at IndieWire who wrote the following. In a new interview with the Sunday Times, Leaving Neverland director Dan Reed claimed that he saw a draft of the Michael script written by three-time Oscar nominee John Logan. Reed called it, quote-unquote, a complete whitewash that ignores facts about the allegations against Jackson. It's an out-and-out -out attempt to completely rewrite the allegations and dismiss them out of hand and contains complete lies. Wow. Now... <clears throat> I'm not surprised to read this at all. I mean, listen, listen, if they made the movie focusing on that stuff, you'd get a whole bunch of other people saying that this was unfair and, and blah, blah, blah. And should this, we knew, we knew that we knew that we knew the moment they announced this movie that there was going to be this controversy coming. Now, how big does it get before the movie comes out? We'll have to wait and see. How do I feel about it? Well... <clears throat> Here's the thing. I was not at anything that Michael Jackson did or did not do. I have no firsthand knowledge. So I have no idea. I have no idea. So let me suggest something that some people may not like, but I want to suggest it anyway. In 2005, uh, Michael Jackson was actually brought up on charges. And a jury, a court and a jury, found him not guilty. They acquitted him of those charges. There was a civil lawsuit brought against him that was dismissed. It was then brought back and dismissed again. And then last year, an appellate court said, no, 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 the, the, uh, you know, the civil lawsuit can move forward. So there's, I think there's an ongoing civil trial, but... And we have no idea how that's going to turn out one way or the other. Here's how I feel about this right now. Remember, I'm somebody who has no skin in this game. I mean, as much as anybody else in the world, I think Michael Jackson's music is incredible. <clears throat> but if he faced criminal charges and a jury in a court acquitted him of those charges, then... I don't know that filmmakers are under any obligation, strictly or morally, to make those allegations a part of the story they want to tell. Do I personally think maybe they should include it because it was kind of a big thing? Yeah, yeah, I, I think maybe they should, but are they under any direct or even moral obligations if a court said, you're acquitted, we find you not guilty of these charges? Should they have to put that in? Look, I'm not going to pretend that I've got the answers to this because I clearly do not. And while I would, if Antoine had asked me, I would say, yeah, I think you should probably put something in about it. But again, I, I don't know that there's any mandate that they have to considering he was found not guilty in a court, court of law. And while there may be civil litigation going on right now, the reality is, there has been no results of that civil litigation. So here you go. Rob, so bottom line for me, do I think they should include a little bit of that? Yeah, I, I think it would be good for the movie and maybe good for everybody that did, but 
Can you hold it against him if they don't? I don't know, man. He went to trial and he was found. He was acquitted. So I, I, I don't know. What do you make of the the words of the director of Leaving Neverland, and and what do you think happens from here on out? Well, first of all, you know Michael Jackson had a really long life, and I don't know if this biopic, what does it deal with? You know, his entire life. Does it deal with the time he was a child and first started out with the Jackson Five, and then moved into his solo career when he worked with Quincy Jones and created Thriller, and then he was in Captain EO, and I mean, you could deal with what forty years of the guy's life before there are any allegations at all. So I have no idea how the movie's going to work out. I don't know what, what they're going for. I don't know. It could be like Rocket Man, more of a pastiche of feeling. I don't know. Or an across the universe kind of a thing that's an examination of the... Not, the I don't know what kind of a movie it is. So it's hard for me to say that, well, they might have just not included it, and that's the whitewashing. It's an interesting choice of words. But I would say that, that uh, I just don't know. Now, I would say probably, depending on, it does say biopic, and if you're, if you're showing the man's life, he unfortunately, or, you know, whatever you, he had to deal with this dogging him and his career for the latter half of as long as he lived on the planet. What did he live to? Like 50, I think? Something. He died at 50, I think? Anyway, yeah. And, and so, you know, that's a big part of what, what he had to deal with in his life. But uh, again, I don't know. It's hard to say. I am a huge fan of Anton Fuqua. You know, whether he's making Training Day, whether he's making the Equalizer movies, whether he's making Olympus Has Fallen, which was rad. I mean, Anton Fuqua can do it all. He's a great genre director. He's a great director of, of, of great dramatic material. He brought home the Oscar for Denzel Washington. I mean, Denzel Washington brought it home for himself, but he was the guy that directed Training Day, David Ayer's great script. So Anton Fuqua is a powerhouse filmmaker. I'll watch anything he makes because it's wild. If he does a Western, everything is wildly entertaining. The man can do it all. And I don't think a guy like Anton Fuqua is going to make a film unless he thinks he can do justice to it or that it does justice to its subject matter. So you know what? I, I trust in Fuqua. Until now, I have to, until I'm given reason not to otherwise. Now, what what the director of Leaving Neverland is suggesting shouldn't be a surprise. No. One of the co-producers of the film is the Michael Jackson estate. Yes, of course. So, I mean, if anybody thought the Michael Jackson estate was going to allow anything to be in this movie that was unbecoming, whether it should or should not be in there, I think we'd all be a little bit crazy if we thought they were going to do that. Guys, we want to thank a sponsor of today's video, better help guys it's a brand new year and a lot of people are making new year's resolutions you know things they want to change about themselves but i've always believed that it's also equally as important to identify the things we're doing well and building on those and therapy helps you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick i've always believed that nothing impacts our daily performance in our jobs our hobbies our relationships like our mental health and i've also said for a long time that it's about time that we stop just putting emphasis on improving our physical health by getting out to the gym, but also by putting emphasis on improving our mental health as well. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you gotta do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. So guys, celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit betterhelp.com slash campia today to get 10% off your first month that's better help h-e-l-p dot com slash campia let's also but you know i mean even bohemian rhapsody didn't delve into a lot of freddie mercury's more um call them colorful uh parts of his life i mean it, it touched on everything but i you know i really like bohemian rhapsody it was a celebration of art and i think if nothing else michael jackson was one of the greatest uh pop vocalists of all time and he brought so much joy to so many people for so long that that you can't just discount that. I mean, like you said, in courts of law, he was never convicted of a crime. And in our way of justice, even though he was tried, he even was though tried he was tried and acquitted. And here's the thing. A lot of people in our in our society, even if people go to court, they do. They go through our legal system and they come out on the other end of it acquitted. You have to abide by that. You can't continue that's that's a that's a our justice system doesn't work that way you know when you when you go through the justice system you have to abide by what our justice system does again i still think they 
it was such a prominent thing that maybe they should mention it. But I, I will say this. Some people might say... By the way, we don't even know if it doesn't. He read the script. Maybe it didn't mention it enough. Maybe. He says it was completely not there at all. But, I mean, we'll see when we see the movie. Depend yeah, it could do. Now, some people might say to me, well, you know, other musical biopics have shown the dark side of celebrities. True. But when you look at biopics of, like, say, Elton John in Rocket Man or Freddie Mercury in Bohemian Rhapsody or uh, uh, Walk the Line, Johnny Cash. All the movies showed some dark side, but it also portrayed them as heroically fighting through it. Right. Right? Like, all of it showed their their weaknesses, that they fell into, into a lot of bad stuff of their own making, things they did to themselves. But all three of those movies also show them heroically working through that and battling through that to come out on the other side. You can't do that in the Michael Jackson situation, right? There, there's no doing that. So you can't bring that, you can't bring these allegations into the movie and then set it up as a traditional music biopic showing the artists heroically battling through their demons. That's not something they can do in this. So the only other option to them is ignore it entirely or make the movie about how he was falsely accused, which is just going to piss off a lot of other people if they do. So, and there was a lot of other stuff. I mean, he had a tough childhood with his father, being a tough taskmaster. Obviously, his own in his own self image, with the plastic surgery and everything, was 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 for him part of a dark side that was intrinsic to himself. And I'm sure the movie delves into all of that. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called The John Campy Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.